This is the third part of, of my second document called Expressions and Equations. And the third part will introduce the use of another function in uh, the calculation of algebraic equations. I have this document right here that we have been using, and we're going to add the last one. And um, the idea we're going to start with is that we know the generic form of the quadratic equation where everything is on the left-hand side, the x squared, x and c, and then the independent term, and then there is a Boolean equal sign and zero to the right-hand side. This equation can be written this way by moving the c to the right, this way by moving the x and z elements to the right, or this way. In any of those ways, you can use it in, in the function solve and I demonstrate here by solving one particular equation when the entire equation is on the left-hand side, or this one where part of the equation is the left-hand side and part in the right-hand side, or even more complex like this, you're getting the same results in any of them. Um, a question of the cub uh, cubic equation. Um, Simply type the equation on the left-hand side and then a independent variable, and you get your results. But not, you, know, you don't always can find all the uh, roots of a polynomial because there's something called the fundamental theorem of algebra. And the fundamental theorem of algebra says that if you have a polynomial of order n with real coefficients, there will be n roots, but not all of them are real. If you have a polynomial greater than 2, you may have, and, and if n is even, you may have zero real roots, and that's the case right here. And you can go ahead and change the the range, let's try a, a wider range, like minus 1,000 to 1,000, and still don't get any real roots because they may be all complex roots. And so we're going to be introducing complex numbers in a following video, but just to give you an idea. In this cubic polynomial, even if I change my range from minus 1,000 to 1,000, I only get one root. And basically what that means is that the other two roots are complex. So how do we find uh, the roots of a polynomial when there are um, complex roots? What you want to do is rewrite the polynomial in increasing order of the x variable. So, independent term first, x to the first power, x to the second power, and so on. And form a vector. Form a vector with those coefficients in that order, first, second, third, up to the n plus 1. And then use a function called polyroots. For example, if you have this cubic equation, a cubic polynomial, actually, and then you write it in increasing order of the powers of x. You will have minus 65 plus 33x minus 9x squared plus x cubed. Then you're going to form your vector. To form the vector, this is how you're going to use it, do it. It's called the vector s, colon. Then we know we need one, two, three, four elements, and so we go to the matrix definition or use control m and request four rows and one column, and that produces a column vector with four rows. Let's we'll move it up a, a little bit. And then we start typing in the numbers there, negative 65, space bar, space bar, I'm sorry, space bar once. And actually, what we need to do is the right arrow key. And the second vector, and the second element is 33, the third one is negative nine, the fourth one is one. And so having defined our vector, we just call function follow roots. I'm gonna repeat that here. You just just type poly roots parenthesis s equals. And then it will find for you all the roots of a polynomial in the in this case one real one and two imaginaries. And the fundamental theorem of algebra indicates that if you one of the roots in a polynomial of real coefficients is complex, the complex conjugate is also will be a root. Here's another example, a quartic polynomial written in increasing order. 
which will let me write this vector with the coefficients in increasing order of the powers of x and the function polyroot will find that I have all four complex roots in in this example. Therefore, I couldn't use solve to, to obtain roots because solve only produces real numbers. And so what we're doing here is some examples of um, of uh, algebraic equations, equations that are based on a polynomial. There are some examples right here, and I'm going to do this one for you. And so what you have to do is create your vector. I'm calling, I've been calling it S, but you can call it anything like V column. And this one has two, three, four, five elements. So I go, uh, let me type Control M, Control M, and put five rows in one column, insert, and then we're going to start writing the the elements from the smallest power, which is 962 here, to the zero power. And then in increasing order of x, the next one will be negative 574. The next one is 147. The next one is negative 16. And the next one is a 1. And then right here, I'm going to type poly root parenthesis v equals and then I'm, I'm getting there my four um, complex roots. And I could, if I if I need to turn in an assignment, I will highlight it like that. And this is the last element in this uh, particular document dealing with algebraic equations solved on polyroots. And in this manner, we end the third part of the second document on expressions and equations. And we're going to continue with other. Uh, videos in uh, in the future.